You need me to click on this. Got it over here? Yeah. I can't see that on the screen. So. Got it. All right. You are Seth and Rowan. Okay. Welcome to this afternoon's workshop on tools to support task completion. We are here at Pacer Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am Sarah Giffen Hunter. I'm an assistive technology specialist. And um, the Simon Technology Center is the department that we are in. Um, I say we, because I have um, Paul here with me. He's doing my tech support. Um, that is the department at Pacer Center. We are presenting over Zoom webinar. Um, Paul will be putting the link to the handout in the chat, as well as the workshop evaluation at the end. Um, it is really great if you open the chat <clears throat> so that you're able to see other people's comments. You can send questions if you're having technical difficulties. Paul can um, help troubleshoot that with you. Um, also, if you have uh, questions that you would like me to address, um, he can share those with me, but he can also answer questions right within the chat while I... Um, throughout the presentation. A certificate of attendance is available if that's something that you're interested in. If you are attending this workshop live via Zoom uh, today, March 20, 2024. Um, at the end of the presentation, there will be an evaluation to fill out and that is required. You must submit the evaluation and then we will remind you again at the end, but then you need to watch and click on the link to get that um, certificate. So, um, PACER is a big uh, nonprofit. We have a lot of different programs, and this is kind of um, like from our website. And um, we have programs for children's mental health. We have a large program of parent advocates that help to support parents in getting accommodations and IEPs um, for their students in school. There in the middle, you see Simon Technology Center. We are basically, I'm going to go over that on the next slide, I think. Um, anyway, we are in the middle of revamping our website, but there's a lot of information on our website at pacer.org, so um, take a look at it. Okay, and this is the Simon Technology Center. Um, we work on um, supporting in whatever we, way we can to help people learn about technology, whether um, through answering questions um, via email or phone. We also have a lending library. This is um, what you see here is sort of the demo center of the lending library. And um, those memberships to the lending library are free to um, Minnesota families and individuals, as well as individual professionals. We also have memberships for um, organizations. So that might be like a whole school district or maybe a um, occupational therapy um, clinic or something. And those are $200 a year to be able to borrow items. And then we also have technology consultations. That is a free service. And that typically is uh, a student or an, an adult with their family or parent, um, or maybe their educator, they come in and it is a uh, individualized um, sort of exploration of technology. So they let us know in advance what kind of things they're looking to get support with. And then we pull together um, tools to help them to sort of demonstrate and have them try um, hands-on, you know, kind of exploration with it. The individualized trainings are just a little bit different. They're still one-to-one, -one, but they are more of a training in a chosen software or tool. So let's say someone has um, purchased a communication device um, then they might sit down and they might get sort of one-on-one -on -one training with a professional. All right, moving right along here. Other Simon Technology Center workshops. So to, to view our past workshops, we have them recorded and they are available on YouTube. If you just go to YouTube, you can search for Simon Technology Center or there's the link um, there in the PowerPoint. And then three upcoming workshops this spring the reading and dyslexia on May 2nd. And then there's another one on writing and dyslexia May 9. And in between there, there's another one for independent living called tools to support meal planning and cooking. So to learn about any of those or register, just go to pacer.org and um, click on workshops and you'll find those. Today's handout 
is um, basically a tech list. And um, it is really helpful to have that open with you um, while you're watching. It, it, it goes in order of everything that I'm demonstrating, all the devices and all the apps, and it gives price information. It has a link for more info about that item and a brief description. So um, that's helpful to follow along. The QR code is there if you have a mobile device and you want to access it that way. Or um, Paul probably has already put the link in the chat so you can open it directly from there. Okay, today's agenda. Um, we're gonna go through and um, talk a little bit about reminders, um, timers, task directions. So I think that's kind of a big part of this, like step-by-step -step directions, how to give someone directions that if they forget, you know, um, or have difficulty staying focused on a task. And then um, related to that are visual schedules. And then we'll wrap up with audio and visual task prompts. Any questions or comments before I get started? Okay. Okay. All righty. So we're going to launch right into reminders. And yes. There we go, okay. So the first app that I have, uh, let me just get my iPad fired up here, is it's just called Reminder. Um, it's by Ada, that's how you can find it, know that you have the right one. Should drop a little bit yeah, get myself right. situated here. Um, Ada, A-I-D-A. So I have my iPad um, open here and it is um, this one, the red one with a check mark in it. And um, whoops, okay, there we go. And that's what that looks like. One of the reasons I like this one is because it's, um, it's kind of easy to use. Of course, you can use your built-in reminders on your phone or your tablet. Um, oh, I'm going to back up just a second here. So the apps that I'm showing you today are on an iPad. And, but that, you know, basically an iPad is the same, larger than an, is the same thing, but larger than an iPhone. And then I will also um, show you a couple apps that are um, also available on Android. But unfortunately, a lot of, there are a lot of apps that are just um, Apple products and not Android, but I, I do have some of those included. Um, and I just use the iPad just so that it's bigger and you can see better. So um, this one, Ada Reminder, has right here, you can see just a lot of different kinds of reminders you can create. They're just all set up in there. And then um, this is the free version and it is limited to just three reminders, but it is really nice because it gives you lots of opportunity to try it without purchasing it. Although I think it's only $1.99 if you like this. Um, so right away, you know, what kind of a uh, reminder do you want to make? I have two in there that I already created. So let's look at start your chores. And actually, I'm going to go to the calendar view. Hold on just one second. Okay. Okay. Okay, that should work, okay. So there's the calendar view, and you can see where there's a star, that's where there's a reminder on the calendar. And then if I hit start your chores, this is what it looks like when you create it. So um, there are, I'm gonna show you, there's lots of different sounds. And one thing I like about this is that some of the sounds are really long. So here it's telling you like 20 seconds, nine seconds, um, so some of them are really loud and very attention getting and long. And then you can also do a voice reminder. So I chose the sound. I also added that photo. I'm going to go ahead and add a new one so that you can see that process of how you do it. I'm going to do a voice reminder. Uh, and so this is just, I just go ahead and do it right here, record. Feed the dog when you get home. One scoop of dog food. I also like, so it gives you up to 30 seconds. That's pretty long. I also like that you can add like extra instructions to it. 
Um, okay, and then uh, let's make that a daily reminder. I can go here and I can label it, feed the dog. It's using my voice. I can choose an image. They have, um, oh, there's a dog, okay. Uh, sure, 215 is fine, save. And I think I, I could have played it back for you. I don't think I did. Oh, I, yeah, okay. So I did it every day. So now the star is there on, on all of them. Um, you can use your own music, choose a song. So if you had Apple Music on your iPad, that's another nice way that might be motivating for some people. And then I can cl also close the calendar view. And if I had, many reminders they would show down here in this list. So uh, that's a, a quick overview of um, Ada reminder. You can see today completed history um, just has some unique ways of, of creating reminders. And then next would be smartphone reminders. So um, <clears throat> This is a really nice way for people that don't have the, um, that don't want to take the time to um, open up the reminder and type something in to just um, ask uh, Siri or Google Assistant to create a reminder. So I'll just say Siri, uh -huh. create a reminder for me to stop at the library on the way home today. It looks like you don't have a home listed on your contact card. <laughs> okay. It doesn't know where home is. I know, I know. <laughs> it doesn't need to know. <laughs> hey Siri, add an event to my calendar. What do you want to call it? Library visit. What should I schedule it for? I hope you're able to hear that. It's not real loud. <clears throat> 5 p.m. today. Library visit is scheduled for 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. today. Yeah, we can't really pick it up if you turn the volume up. Also. Yeah, okay. Be <clears throat> so what's nice about it is that, oh, thank you, Siri. What's nice about it is that <clears throat> it's an interactive um, discussion. So I tell her what to call it, and then I tell her what time, and she just puts it in there, and it's in my reminders now. Um, yeah, so that's handy. Righty, now we're going to move on to timers. And I have some physical timers to show you first. <clears throat> These are um, time timers. I've got a couple different sizes. I've got a small one. This one has a little, little dry erase um, board on it. Am I upside down? <laughs> I do the right thing. I'm like, that doesn't look great. Um, this one has a little tiny dry erase board on it. So if you want to write some kind of reminder on there and then you turn it. So there's a visual um, timer for the passage of time, as well as an audio that you can turn on and off. And this one's kind of just small and, and portable. <clears throat> and this one's a little bigger, has a handle to carry it around. So again, there's that visual reminder. And then um, this one actually has a volume control. So you can turn it higher or lower as needed. So both the visual and the auditory um, reminders with these timers. Stop. Okay. And then this one is called the timer with dry erase board. So it's got this little timer in it and then a little stand and this dry erase board. And so this one is kind of handy. I like this for homework or task completion. Um, so it could be um, first you would do um, take out the trash. And then you could put five minutes. Second, sweep, third, oh, 
do do third mod that. Okay, 10, five. Okay, so then we can set this down for the total 20 minutes and there's the steps. So it's pretty basic, um, but that's kind of how that is set up. Or beeping. One more is um, I'm actually going to switch my camera here and show you this one. This is the timer companion schedule. And so this is actually has little pockets and I set this up to um, be able to have a task along with the amount of time um, that is shown on the um, time timer. And so you can create this yourself and it's just clear you slide them in and out, take little pictures of the timer. And so it's kind of similar to what families might use with kids at home that uh, are kind of creating a visual schedule. <laughs> Hopefully these timers uh, settle down. Um, so that's the timer companions um, schedule. All of these devices that I'm showing you today are available to borrow from our lending library. Okay, and then I've got time trackers, another visual timer, but a little bit different. Um, these operate on the green, yellow, red kind of principle. I did it again, upside down, okay. Um, so this one has a clock on top and you can set it um, you set the number of minutes that you want it and it will um, go through that. It's very useful for um, helping people to transition between one task and another. So here you can see this is the mini. Um, and you can, I like this one because of the ease of just setting it. Um, it's not like all these push buttons digital. So if I want someone to spend 15 minutes on a task, now let's say I want them to spend 20 minutes on a task and then be done. Then I turn it on back here and then I push the green start button and it lights up green and this will count down. So as long as it's green, that means they're supposed to be really focusing on that task. And then after the 15 minutes, it will go, it will turn to yellow for five minutes and that means that they should be wrapping up the task or that they're gonna be done soon. And then after the five minutes, so the whole 20 minutes is up, then it will turn, it will beep and it will flash and be red. So really trying to get their attention. And you can, again, you can turn the volume up or down. Um, and so the task should be completed and they should be moving on to the next thing when the red comes on. So yes, that is the time tracker. And I think the larger one um, you can set, you know, it's a little bit more complicated, but it also is larger if you need that to be a uh, bigger visual. And now I'm gonna turn that off. And there's a question. There's a question. Um, have you ever seen any timers that show the numbers set up like a clock? So five to 15 in the upper right quadrant. So the countdown go counterclockwise then essentially, but the numbers would be in the same order as a clock. I have not seen any. That's a very good question. I like that question. Huh. Yeah. I That's interesting. That. Uh, maybe the maybe the magnetic one that we have, I don't know. You could look it up yeah, if you I'll wanted. Look, yeah, look it up. Um, it's in our inventory. If you just look up clock, I bet you'd find it. Yeah. I don't remember what it looks like. Okay, and then I have another app to show you. This is called Timed. T-H-Y-M-E-D. It's this one um, right here. It's green with a little leaf on it. So this one I found when I was looking for, so sometimes we use what's called an interval timer, which um, a lot of them are created for, for workouts, for exercise. Um, but what's nice about them is that they go through these different steps and they time out this step and they time out the next step on and on. 
So um, this one can be used that way. These three came with it. It looks like it has a cooking one and that one and then just a regular timer. So then I, I created um, this one called Clean My Room. I just tap on it. So um, here, I'll go ahead and add another step so you can see how this works. Um, let's see. Um, and you can see how it's kind of set up for exercise, but um, I found like it really doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't, there's nothing about it that makes it not work for something like a task. So there we go. It tells you your, your, it automatically adds up your total duration. And then I just hit here and hit start. And it has a little warm up sound, tell you it's time to get ready. And then it has clean my room at the top and it shows the passage of time here on this timer. And then I did try also, if you get done with the first one, you can just tap to the next one and it will automatically start the next cycle of that. So as far as just a visual timer and being able to add um, task steps, this one I think is free and works pretty well. You can pause it, meaning you're gonna come back to it or you can stop it and say, okay, we're done with that for today. And now we can just go back to home. So I like the simplicity of it, creating it and using it. Okay. All right, now we're on to task directions. Any questions before I move on? Um, there's a general question about okay. goblin tools, if anyone's familiar. It's a great recommendation. Um, I've never used it. It's goblin. A, uh, it's an Android one. Um, that break also breaks down tasks, <laughs> simplifies the process. Wow, okay, we'll look into that. Um, okay, for task directions, the first thing I have is a device. Um, this is by Attainment Company. This is called a step pad, and it's a small handheld device. It's just a little alternative if you know someone doesn't have a, a smartphone or a tablet. I just lost my little thing here. Um, and you can uh, make little, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's called a step pad because you can you can record um, for four different um, activities, four different tasks. You can record steps for it. Um, I don't remember exactly how many steps for each one. I may have put that in the handout. I don't know. Um, so I I'm gonna hit prep. And then I'm going to hit the next button, the red. You know, red from the cabinet. So kind of nice that it doesn't keep going with the instructions that that you basically go do the thing and then you come back and do push the button again. You know, red from the cabinet. Get your cleaning solutions ready. Cleaning solutions ready. Get the mop ready to prep cleaning supplies. Cleaning supplies. Not sure if we messed up and recorded one. I think and when you hit the yellow one, then it moves on to the next, right? But, or maybe not. I forget how to do that. Clean table. Oh, there you go. We didn't fill all of the spaces on the recording, but um, anyway, that's how that works. There's um, instructions that come with it. There's a record button on the back, and there's different levels and. Um, and it has like a wristband and it can hang around the neck. So that's just an, its own independent little sort of task step thing. Okay. Okay, back to the iPad. The next app I'm going to show you is called Trello. This is sort of a list making app, but it can just be used in so many different ways. Um, it's this uh, blue icon here with the two white um, rectangles on it. I'm going to go ahead and open it. I kind of like it this direction. So Trello has different boards. So these are called boards. So that's sort of like the overall topic. 
And um, then I'm gonna tap on work tasks. And then within a board, there's these cards, these lists and there's cards on the lists. So you can add photos, you can create sets for a task. So here I have like work tasks um, and I just put the days of the week. And to add another card, you just tap on it. Um, type it in, add it, and it's there. Um, a really handy thing about Trello is that you can share it with other um, team members or family members or whoever. So let's say I want to share the, the work task board. I basically share it by um, sending an email to someone. It's probably up here. Um, add members, public. Um, and with an invite. So you can share it with other people, which I think is kind of useful because you could set up a task as you want it to be done and then share it with the person that is going to be doing the task. Um, like I said, you can add a, add a photo in here if you want a photo that helps describe the task. You can also um, move these around. So let's say that they didn't get done cleaning the doorway on Wednesday, then you just hold it down and you move it over to Thursday. And either person can do that the person using it or whoever's sharing with it on, on Trello. Um, I also um, checked, and this one works with speak screen. So speak screen is a setting on an iPad. Um, if you need the auditory support, then you turn it on in settings. And um, that way, when I do two fingers and I pull down from the top, it will read it out loud. List, Monday, card, check and order cleaning supplies, card, clean the microwave, card, sweep the floor. List, Tuesday, hear that. card, restock electronics, card, check supply of bags, list, Wednesday, card. And then when I'm done, I can just close that out. So that's built in within the iPad um, and it works for um, Trello to do that. Okay. The next app is called Can Plan. And this one is free. And again, I really like it because it's so simple to set up and use. And here we have, um, I think this one comes with the, with the app. So it has pictures and it has the description down here. There are two different ways you can um, use it for your tasks. You can set it so that it automatically reads everything when you get to the page, or you can set it like I have now, where I can choose if I want the auditory um, reminder and I just tap on speak. Open top of coffee machine and pour water into the right side. And I just swipe through them. You can make very detailed um, photos, you know, with in the person's own environment of the exact machine or whatever they're using. And then um, this is one that I created Low dishwasher. So again, if you want to, you can get very specific um, with pictures or um, descriptions and have it read it out Place loud Place large you. utensils in middle of top rack. And um, So that was to start a new task. Or I think if I hit up here in blue, there's edit. I can hit edit and then I tap on it and it takes me into the place where I create it. Um, so really simple. I can add another step. It says, do you want a photo? Type in your text and then you save it. So it does a great job, um, you know, for this kind of a thing, just a picture story. Um, laying out a task that is can plan. The next one is called Pictello. And this one um, right here, the icon is like a little story book. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. So these are the ones that were built into the app. Um, 
but you can also create your own visual story. It's very similar to CanPlan, but we have not been able to get CanPlan to work with video. So I wanted to show um, Pictello because it does have the opportunity to add videos. So here's loading the dishwasher. And I got to start it. it. The empty glasses and mugs can be placed upside down in the top rack. The prongs help them to stay. I think I can jump the ahead. The go in the bottom rack. And then here's a video where I've recorded my voice describing it. Make sure the door is closed all the way. Um, so if I want to edit that. Okay, edit. Um, oh, I was going to say the wizard mode. That's what I forgot. So if you go down here and you want to start a new one, then one option is wizard mode, which basically means it's walking you through it. Um, each step up here, I just hit next and it, it, you know, asked me the things that I want to do. Boom, boom, boom. Picture next, choose your voice, make a recording. Close. Next. And then adding the pages. So then you would add all the pages to your story. So anyway, that's Pictello that can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, it does have the automatic um, audio support with each one. Right. That's the last. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so a few other online resources for task directions. Uh, I'm going to show you some websites. Here is, um, this is able to learn. Able to learn. One of the things I found is these visual recipes. So I'll just click on that and you can, you can browse through here. And then um, it looked like a, most of them were free. Some of them were uh, $5 or something, um, but you're basically um, downloading it. And you can see down here um, the different, um, it is actually like a visual recipe that you could print out these different steps. Oh, nice. Very detailed steps, yeah. Um, and this has a lot of other things. Uh, I think there's a whole lot of categories and a lot of, of other um, skills that it covers. And then um, WikiHow um, is uh, there's a lot of how-to information, some of which is videos, how to wash dishes in a sink. And then um, Instructables is about how to make a lot of different things. And then of course I've got YouTube. And in YouTube, you can just ask, you know, for um, how to do something. And then as long as you don't mind watching the ad first, then it's uh, pretty good. <laughs> or you can find a lot of different things. I should say it's not pretty good. <laughs> Who knows? <clears throat> okay. Next we have visual schedule apps. And the first one I have is called FTVS HD First Then Visual Schedule. So I'm going to open this on the iPad. And it's the green one here at the top with the little um, icons. I'm gonna open that. Um, so this, this can be, um, really as basic or simple as you want or, you know, longer. So um, I think this one comes with it. This comes preloaded and 
it has the icons, but you can also, um, you know, if they seem kind of silly, you can also just create your own photos, add your own photos. So um, here's one that's called Saturday Chores. And so this is when you're creating it, that's what this looks like right here. Um, the putting in the description, the photo, what kind of sound you want, a video. Okay. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that I think that one only goes oh, It's irritating. Okay. Let me swipe right. Oh, it's not showing the the envelope things. Oh, that's yeah. Because right now you can just check them and swipe them over, right? Like if you grab the sweep icon and you swipe it over. No, you so, should be able to, but it's not working. Like it thinks I'm editing it. What's that editing? There we go. Oh. No, that's how you actually edit. Well, demo. Let's edit it down there. Go back and there's to the main menu. And down the bottom right, that I got. I think you choose the style. Oh, see. And there's one thing, it, it's hard to tell. It's an overall edit mode. That happens to me every time. So now edit is just turned off, which is a good thing because if you don't want your your student, your child, or whoever changing it, that's why the edit mode I think has like a hard off. But now it's going to behave. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so there are different ways you can interact with this or view this, and that's what's represented here at the bottom with these different squares. So you have your first task. You can check it off here. You can. Um, go down like that, or you can view it, and that's why it's called first then. So this is what you're doing, this is what you're doing next. Um, depending on the individual, what is most helpful to see all of your tasks or to just see one at a time? And I believe this should work with speak screen also. Feed the dog, empty trash, sweet, mop, empty the dishwasher, free time. Auditory um, feature. It works there too, or it kind of fun. It's done. Move it into the yeah envelopes not working. Oh yeah, it's okay. I like this one better. And then um, it will reset them. Reset the current schedule. So anyway, when you go in and create those, you can choose anything. Empty the dishwasher. Oh, nice. You can choose your photo. You can choose what the um, what the auditory reminder is. So that's first then a uh, visual schedule. And then the next one is a visual schedule planner. And this one is a little bit different in that it's based on a calendar. So, um, here we have a calendar. This is today, and this would be like tasks at the at work, and um, with a time um, attached to it for the reminder. And then, so this says work on email, and then ten o'clock meet with supervisor, and then at eleven o'clock clean the break room. And then um, you can view this um, different calendar modes. That's kind of nice with the visual images. Um, I go back to day. So then there is also activity schedules um, where you can add steps. So this one called clean the break room. When I tap on this um, clipboard um, icon, then it opens up the, um, the steps of the task. So the first thing, let's see if that'll read to us. Whoops, too much. 
240, Wednesday, March 20th, 2024, AM, PM, clean the break room, pick up trash, slide in chairs, clean tables, sweep floor, timer, okay. 240. When so speak screen works decently. Um, and then there's um, a timer. I don't think I have times set in for these, but, but anyway, I created these steps in here. Uh, so that's kind of nice within, um, you know, you can have all your items in there and, um, and that's what that looks like when you're adding a new, it's got a lot going on when you're adding a new, um, event and you give it a title, you know, do you want it to repeat? Do you want the reminder photo it also can link to a video clip. So really helpful for, um, you know, task instructions. Let's cancel out that one. So if, uh, yeah, if you're looking for something based on a, a calendar, then the visual schedule planner is a nice one. Um, the other one that I have on here, um, I'm just gonna open it briefly. I added this one because it is the one that I know of that works with the Apple Watch. So if you were looking for a wearable um, visual bring, bring schedule. The titles up. Oh, yes, thank you. Okay, now we're at to do visual schedule. And um, so there's the week and it shows, I, I, so I don't like this one as well for this view, but like I said, I added this one because it is compatible with the Apple Watch. So if you had someone that was using an Apple Watch and wanted a visual schedule, this would be one that would work. Um, here you can kind of get an idea. So this is showing what it would show on the watch. It would show the icon. And if I tap on edit here, you can see um, it has a different built-in, um, do that yet. The different built-in um, icons and names, if you want to use it. It looks like it's kind of set up for school. Um, and then if I want to add one, change the color, oh, prompts, change the color. Um, so that would come up on the watch as it goes through that routine. That is to do visual schedule. Okay. Now I've got a couple that are also um, available on Android. Um, this one I do really like. This is Brilli, Brilli, B-R-I-L-I, Routines, Visual Timer. Um, they have a 10-day free trial. Um, but here you can see what some of the um, you know, tasks are. I think these were all built into this. So they have some routines built in. And here's um, what it looks like. Um, so you can schedule it at a certain time and at a certain time. And then um, the icons and the different amount of time for each one. I don't know about stars to earn, but anyway. Um, go back out of there. And then, so right now, this is a little bit small down here, but like I said, this is also on Android. Down here, I'm in manage, which means it's sort of like edit. And then over here, if I go to start, then it's, um, it's showing me... So when I uh, chime, when it started, uh, timer, as well as the, you know, the image to remind um, what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And then um, I also like this. Um, so in addition to this timer, it has this sort of overall timer. I like that too. So you can kind of see how you're progressing with your steps. And um, and even though this um, routine was set for a specific time, 
I can start it whenever I want, which is nice. So let's say you're 10 minutes late. You don't have to, you know, skip the first 10 minutes. It starts and uses the same amount of time and shows when your routine will wrap up. And so that's pretty handy. And I think I can also get done early and swipe it and then it goes on to the next one. So this is a pretty nice little app, really routines. Stop it. Back out, cancel it, yes. And it will reset itself. Things here. Okay, that's brilliant. And then uh, I'm not gonna do a demo. The other one is um, Timo. That's another one that is a visual daily planner for Android. Okay, how do we do? Any questions? I feel like I've been flying through these a little bit. There was there was one question that we've kind of already addressed in the chat, but asking for um, like motivating tools, like as a way to gamify task completions. And um, Lex mentioned Habitica, and I also mentioned mm -hmm. Habitica. Right. Um, there's probably some others, but I'm not thinking of any at the time. Yeah. So you type that in there, Habitica, so people know what you're yep. how to spell that. Yeah. Yep. Um, it looks like Brilly has. I didn't actually explore that. But it looks like it has it had like yeah collected stars. Start completing your task to collect stars. Completed routines, longest streaks, um, and then probably if you tie a reward with that, like they would have to collect a certain number of stars or complete routines. Um, but yeah, that's that that would work that way, but that's not gamified. Um, that is that works. That sure. one, yeah. yeah. Not specifically the way that Habitica is, though. Right. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, somebody, I mean, someone should create more of those. They they yeah. make a lot of money, I think. The, the earning badges and yeah, things yeah. as you go is definitely yeah. that's helpful. True. Yeah. Yep. Great question. Okay. Um, so next, audio and visual task prompts and um so that would be being able to so this is an um, amazon echo dot um so this would be talking to alexa similar to how i did early on talking to um siri um but i also have here a google um item this is uh like a this is a Lenovo um, product, but it's like a Google Nest Hub. Works with Google. Um, you can turn off the camera. You can turn the off the back on. You can turn off the microphone, which is nice, so it doesn't listen to you when you don't want it to. Um, but this is nice with the display, so I can ask it. Um, uh, oh, you can create. Um, let's see if I can get there. You can create built-in routines here we are well these come with it these are already built in but you can edit them so here's on the 21st in bloomington it'll be cloudy with a high of 37 and a low of 27. what time should i set the alarm for 9 p.m done your alarm set for 9 p.m so that's what i mean by routine is like it's already uh oh, my camera went out. Oh, I got it. It already, um, it already had has programmed in it to tell you the weather. Yeah, it's good. Right. And then, um, hey Google, turn off the night sounds. To tell you the weather, to set the alarm for you, and then make the go to sleep peaceful sounds. Um, so you can create your own routines. Let's go back out here. Um, I can ask it to set me a reminder. So I say, hey, Google, remind me at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning to pack my lunch. I don't know, but I found these results <laughs> on search. Oh, cool. Hey, Google, create a reminder for me. 
What's the title? Pack lunch. Okay, pack lunch. When do you want to be reminded? Saturday. All right, pack lunch. This will be for Saturday. At what time? 8 a.m. Got it. I'll remind you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Okay, I will delete it now so it doesn't do it. Okay, I delete. Okay, yes. Um, or because it has this video, the display, I can say, hey, Google, show me a video of how to clean windows. Okay, showing how to clean windows videos. And I can choose one that I like and I can start it. It's probably going to have an ad, unfortunately. I didn't get rid of those ads. Oh, you're on YouTube. Okay. It's YouTube. Yeah. So, yeah, turn the volume down and wait and then hit skip. Yeah. Pay for the premium, which is or pretty expensive. Pay for the premium on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's how you do that. And that hour seems to go by fast. Any questions as we are nearing the end of the hour that I could address? Ooh, thank you. <laughs> there was a question, I think I maybe answered it, but are there um, asking about any of these apps, can they be managed from another device? And I mentioned Trello, but most of these other apps need to be managed on the device they're I on. I think so. But Trello is a good solution. Trello is a good solution, yeah, yeah. Uh, and really any checklist app that is web-based uh -huh. could theoretically uh -huh. be managed from a different device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No questions at the moment. Although I think I would look at really routines also. I seem to recall that it had, um, really that it had a, a, a parent view and, a, and like a child view. So that would be someone inputting something and then the oh, child yeah. seeing it differently. I, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't dig into that, but I would take a look if you were interested in that kind of a feature, yeah. Um, here are ways to reach us. Our email is stc at pacer.org or to visit our website. Oopsie. I'm putting the survey in now. So you can, there we go. Okay. Yes. Great. So please do um, complete our workshop evaluation on SurveyMonkey. Paul's got it in the, in the chat. If you are interested in a certificate of attendance, you need to com complete the survey, hit submit, and then watch closely for the link that will say, click here for the certificate of attendance. This is not available if you are watching in the future on YouTube. And our annual benefit is coming up. If you are local, please do check it out. We've got the Goo Goo Dolls uh, coming to perform at the Convention Center downtown on Saturday, April 27. Any other questions? No questions. Before we wrap up? Well, thank you for joining us today. Hmm. Okay, I think we're across that. Great. Thanks, everyone. All right.